pursuant to order, I will now move uh, to uh, valedictory statements and uh, I will, uh, in calling Senator McMahon, I'll just send uh, the, the message out on the broadcast that uh, we are commencing valedictory statements now. Senator McMahon. Um, thank you, Mr President. Um, Mr President, I, I rise today to take this opportunity to thank the Senate and to express my gratitude in a number of areas over the last three years of my time in this place. Uh, now, as we all know, in June last year, the country Liberal Party exercised their democratic right and selected a new Senate candidate. There have been many hours and column centimetres to discuss the merits of this decision or otherwise, but I would like to have a few other reflections. Um, on reflecting my time in this place, I want to start by acknowledging those around me who have offered me tremendous support over an extended period of time. I made some initial mistakes in who I chose to receive advice from. I have acknowledged those mistakes and they continue to follow me in this place. Personal staff, as we know, can make or break an elected member, and I've certainly experienced both. I've taken the opportunity to bring my current staff to Canberra to witness the budget and see firsthand the parliament in action, which unfortunately they have been unable to do over most of my term. Now let me start with, uh, with some of the staff that I brought with me. Helen Bateman, who has been with the office from the onset and who more than most experienced the highs and lows with me. Helen has seven decades of life experience, many of those in politics, and I am grateful for her tireless work in keeping me on schedule and in her genuine and sincere engagement with constituents. Kylie Banani joined my office last year. Kylie swept into the office and brought with her substantial organisation skills, with her ability to connect to people and create from scratch programs and events for ministers and even the Prime Minister at short notice. I'd like to acknowledge Lance Northey, who's not actually here today, uh, but he has been my long-suffering media advisor. And given some of the media attention I have attracted, his has not been an easy task. He has filled the shoes with all of his many years of experience you would expect. And to you, Holly, um, I would thank you for bringing Lance to me. <clears throat> Mary Ann St Clair was a personal friend before I entered politics. She gives me endless joy and laughter, mainly at her own expense, but uh, she doesn't mind. She's a good sport. Um, Mary Ann, thank you for, for working tirelessly for our constituents and being a thorn in the side of Telstra and the NBN. Uh, Riley Shipp is a young Territorian who's studying here at ANU. Throughout COVID, he has unfortunately been quite estranged from us, but he contributes to our WhatsApp conversations and is outstanding at making mango daiquiris. Very important skill in uh, a Territory office. Uh, Chris Sivertrees. Big Chris joined my office after helping me fire a pre previous office manager. It's been a gift that keeps on giving. So, um, so sorry, Chris, you're like a boomerang. You keep coming back to us. Uh, sometimes you don't know what you've been missing until you find it. Chris became a confidant of mine and he steadied the office through the use of his own measured temperament and people skills. I mentioned Ashley Manakaros, who took over from Chris when Chris thought that he wanted to return to his home and wife in Tennant Creek. Turns out he was wrong. Um, he came back to Darwin, but um, Ashley was familiar to many in this place through a long career in politics. It seems some of you never appear to leave. He left my office a few weeks ago to pursue other challenges, which I didn't understand because I thought I was a pretty good challenge. <laughs> but uh, perhaps he meant he wanted less, not more. <laughs> Um, to, to Wayne Nader, my husband, who has been the reason 
I have been able to come to this place over the past three years without a tribe of, as Michaelia said uh, this week, fur babies trailing behind me. Uh, it's often been expressed that uh, we may like a, a Senate cat or dog, and I can assure you that you would have had several um, if I had not been able to leave them at home. Uh, he has also been incredibly supportive of me and my job, particularly over the last 12 months. To all of my colleagues, I have and will forever <clears throat> appreciate your candour, your counsel and friendship. And of course, particularly my Nats Senate family of Matt, who is unfortunately not here, um, Susie Perrin and our leader, Bridget. To all of you who have assisted my office by answering endless questions, taking time out of your busy days, <clears throat> and thank you very much to uh, Holly, Keith Pitt, and Bridget for particularly, for generously lending me your staff. Um, I really, really appreciate the loaners. <clears throat> um, I'll just mention um, Deputy Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce and, and Vicky Campion, who've been absolute rocks to me during my time here. For those of you that know Barnaby well, he is a very, very, very kind and caring person. And as a result of that kindness and caring attitude, <clears throat> he often tends to pick up stray people. And um, I kind of feel like I'm one of his strays, uh, that he just never managed to rehome. On the opposition side, I wish to personally acknowledge Senator Don Farrell, <clears throat> who despite his personal opposition to voluntary assisted dying, was prepared to offer his assistance in getting my Insuring Territory Rights Bill debated. His interactions with me were sincere and his word was his word. I also want to say thank you for the kind words and um, often random calls and text messages from Senator Malindiri McCarthy. Um, she is obviously a Territory colleague and she has been um, a great friend and support. People think that in the heat of political battle we never work together, but of course those of us in this place know that that is not true. And uh, one of our greatest abilities in this place is the ability to be able to work with each other. And of course, when we work together, uh, the biggest winners from our point of view are Territorians. Um, and I'd also like to mention, and, and I mentioned I mentioned her in the condolence motion on, on Monday, um, Senator Kimberly Kitchen. I spoke uh, of my work with her and the joy that I had in sharing the Joint Standing Committee with her. Um, so I'd like to acknowledge all of, all of my colleagues, and sorry if I've left some out, you are all special and important to me. Um, there has been much written about my resignation from my former party, the CLP, and speculation over why. My losing pre-selection was not connected to my resignation at all. A democratic decision was made. We can argue the merits of that another time, but it was a democratic decision um, and they exercised their right to do that. I have no problem with that decision at all. Uh, my re reason to resign was driven entirely by my former staff member, Jason Riley, who did abuse and terrorise my office, including myself, <clears throat> and the party's decision to place him into a position on their central council. To have to sit in meetings with such a person was stressful, a very stressful experience, and one that has <clears throat> not been without me seeking out professional assistance to overcome the anxiety and PTSD it created. Uh, the reported treatment of my fellow Senator Kimberly Kitching, as I just touched on Kimberly, the reported treatment of her by her Labor colleagues greatly saddens me. Whether or not it contributed to her death is a matter of speculation, and it will likely never be determined. But that's really irrelevant. If it happened, it should not have happened, <clears throat> and yet it seems it may have, 
And uh, so it does over and over again, unfortunately. We need to accept that poor behaviour can be part of our profession and that part needs to be eliminated from our game. A great friend of mine once said, politics is a nefarious business. And he's right. My only hope is that we are learning and evolving and it won't always have to be this way. <clears throat> this alleged behaviour towards Senator Kitching should not become a partisan football, uh, for it is not constrained to any one particular side of politics. We on this side, my lord ourselves, over the recent response to claims of bullying and sexual harassment with the Jenkins report, and it was a very appropriate and good response. We will now find ourselves tempted <clears throat> to point to the other side with an attitude of, look over there, see what they did. We should refrain, <clears throat> for bullying, harassment and victim blaming can still be occurring on all sides of politics. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I was a subject of a vicious display of victim blaming in the media by a former senior staffer. This was in response to my revelation that I had resigned from the CLP due to inaction on my concerns for my personal safety. This public attack was female on female, as is the alleged uh, the allegation surrounding Cinder Kitching. It seems it's not a man thing, a faction thing, a party thing, but it certainly can be a political thing. I don't want this to become a finger pointing or point scoring exercise. I want it to be a learning one. I think of the premature death of my colleague Kimberly Kitching, and one thing that haunts me is that so easily could have been me. We can honour her memory by not making this a political issue, but by fixing it. So politics is a better place, particularly for women. I would now ask your indulgence um, to go over a few of the things that have been important to me uh, during my time here. <clears throat> when I entered this place, there was no COVID. Uh, the world seemed normal, and then the world came crashing down for the rest of my term. Um, but I, um, I got stuck in and I wanted to achieve things. I didn't realise how short a time I would have in this place. So, so it is lucky that I, uh, I got stuck in and um, tried to make Australia, and particularly the Territory, a better place. This election, voters will get to elect two members for the House of Representatives in the Northern Territory. It is through the combined efforts of myself working with my colleagues and members opposite that we saved these two seats. I want to acknowledge the role of then Deputy Prime Minister Michael McCormack, Barnaby Joyce, Lou O'Brien and Matthias Corman, Bridget McKenzie in this as well. Um, had we failed, then we would be electing one less person to argue our case in Canberra. In the agriculture space, we saw a modification and positive changes to ASIL 3.0 regulations. And for that, um, I thank my national colleagues and Minister Littleproud for his open-minded approach as to the consequences for producers after they were abandoned by even the, the live exporters themselves. I am grateful that I had the support of my colleagues in the Nationals Senate team to convince the government not to appeal the live export decision of the federal court. We could have ex easily extended the pain, but common sense prevailed. The introduction and development of an agriculture visa, which now has Vietnam signed up to the bilateral agreement. Uh, this will assist the industry address workforce shortages, as we did with the seasonal worker and other programs. Mangoes are the second largest value agricultural industry in the Northern Territory, and COVID nearly wiped this out with a lack of access to, um, to pickers. Um, I think um, 
Minister Littleproud thought that I was, I was haunting and stalking him, um, because every time in the months leading up to mango picking season there would be many phone calls. In the end, we managed to save about 80 per cent 80 per cent of the mango crop. And now, with this ag visa, I am positive for the industry going forward. I was also um, able to argue for the removal of the working hours cap for international students, which has eased the pressure when it came to their ability to earn income on the back of COVID and provided the hospitality and tourism industries another source of valued workers. <clears throat> but there are still policy battles to be had, starting with the NT's ability to make its own laws. The Andrews Bill is almost a quarter of a century old and it needs to be removed. <coughs> Every other state in Australia is allowed to at least debate voluntary assisted dying laws, and yet we in the NT and the ACT are not. We are not second-class citizens, so I ask that we not be treated this way. To quote a member opposite, we don't need voluntary assisted decision-making. The other, the other fight at the moment is in the Northern Territory. I know other states, uh, other jurisdictions, it happens as well, but <coughs> we, are being, um, we are being mandated to, with COVID vaccinations. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm a pro-vaxxer. I'm a scientist. I'm a vet. I'm fully vaccinated and I support vaccination. I support COVID vaccination, but that's my choice. I don't want to have to have this brought upon people that in order to work, you have to undergo a medical procedure. There is also the powers that have been given to our Chief Health Officer, specifically in the Northern Territory. We should never shirk our responsibilities in Parliament, but we are democracy and we have seen the removal of rights, which makes me personally uncomfortable. Moving forward, I also have concerns about the support for business and industry in the term ahead. Labor and their Green partners are anti-energy, anti-industry and anti-agriculture. A Labor Greens government is not what Australia needs right now. I also have grave concerns for the ability of the NT government to expend the Commonwealth funds that we've committed um, in areas, particularly roads and infrastructure. We've delivered a very generous budget. <coughs> the problem is the NT government's inability to actually roll that money out and spend it where it's needed. Um, many people have asked about the future for me, what I'm passionate about, what I'm working on. I'll go to my maiden speech where I talked about nuclear energy and how we cannot continue to ignore it as part of our energy mix and our broader solution to reaching net zero emissions. My position is similar, if not stronger, than when I came to the pl this place. The UK, the US, Canada and France all have around a 20 per cent nuclear mix in their energy plants and in their plans to achieve net zero. We can't be blind to this. We must explore every means available to mankind to address climate change concerns. We will do Australia a great injustice if we do not develop gas reserves and if we bury our head in the sand when it comes to nuclear energy. Um, in closing, let me say, when uh, on this, reflecting on um, what may lie ahead for me in the future, um, I, I have made no decisions at this stage about my immediate future, which may confuse some people. Um, but I am a qualified veterinary surgeon. 
I was accepted into university as a 16-year-old and completed my degree at the age of 20 and have worked in the industry ever since. Uh, I have that opportunity to return to a successful business or many other opportunities that my time in this place um, has taught me to take advantage of the, the skills and the things that I've learned. <coughs> Mr President, all of us grow into the roles of senators over time. None of us slip into the role and become the most effective politician from day one. I know I wasn't when I first was elected, but given more time in this place, my contributions would have been greater than the opportunity has afforded me. I am lucky my future is more secure than others who depart this place and uh, more se secure than most others facing the next election. <clears throat> I leave clear of mind knowing I did the best job possible and a list of achievements which will last well beyond my time here. I thank you, Mr President, and I thank the Senate, <clears throat> the people of the Northern Territory and uh, those within the CLP who supported me on my endeavours and expressed sorrow at my departure. My road was bumpy, but then living in and coming from the Northern Territory, the roads are always bumpy. <laughs> so, um, so thank you, Mr President, and thank you to all um, members, senators and staff in this place. <clears throat> Thank you for your service, Senator McMahon. And Senator McKenzie, I will give you the call. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And um, I just briefly wanted to extend, uh, on behalf of coalition senators and uh, obviously the National Party more broadly, thanks to Senator McMahon for her service. Um, Nigel Scullion left very, very big shoes to fill, but you bought a very um, typical territory attitude. <laughs> guts and bravery to the role. Um, you called a spade a spade. You called things as you saw it. You were very, very brutally honest at times with um, your colleagues, in, whether it be in party room in this place or in the committee work you undertook. Um, you, I think you've listed your list of achievements and uh, you know, they're significant. And it's because you used the processes available to you, the fact that you had a team and a a party that was going to back you in, um, and you're able to deliver real outcomes. I think one of the things you um, really focused on was your um, love of the defence force and your concern um, for defence industry um, and our sovereignty and security more broadly, and the conversations that you had within the committee, but also uh, with Minister Dutton to that effect, I think, um, have been taken very seriously by the government. So I want to thank you. I want to wish you all the best. Um, Look forward to going shooting in the territory uh, when I get up there, uh, and just yeah, thanks for your service. Senator McCarthy. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President. I, I would just like to uh, put on the parliamentary record uh, my thanks to you, Senator Sam McMahon, as your fellow senator in the Northern Territory. We sit on opposite sides, and I think that's a really good thing because there's probably not too much we, we agree on. But when we come together, we know that there are issues that are so critical uh, for the people of the Northern Territory. And you mentioned those in, in your speech. Uh, certainly the saving the seat of Lingiari and ensuring that the people of the Northern Territory had two reps in the House of Representatives and maintain that was absolutely critical, Sam. And it was... Uh, wonderful to be able to work with you on that. I certainly witnessed firsthand uh, the enormous pressures that you experienced on your side, and I commend you uh, for your ability to walk through that kind of fire, uh, knowing that you're doing so on behalf of the people that we both represented. I think uh, when I reflect on having first met you uh, in coming into 
uh, politics and out on the hustings across the territory. It's funny, you know, you can live in the territory and they say it's a small place, but uh, we never actually got to meet each other until we were actually on the campaign trail and uh, then started following each other to the different uh, polling booths around the communities. And I have to say that uh, people then were asking, who is this Dr Sam McMahon? And, you know, Sam, you can leave the Senate, obviously way too soon, uh, in my view. You can leave the Senate knowing that in the three years that you've been here, with COVID, for two of it, and how incredibly challenging that has been, but you can leave knowing that you have achieved enormously uh, on behalf of the no people of the Northern Territory with the vote of keeping Lingiari, also supporting the voter ID uh, concerns that we obviously had uh, in the short time frame that uh, people across the Northern Territory would have had to actually understand that bill. And your private senator's bill uh, is a bill that must be debated here before the Senate. And I certainly hope that uh, those who are coming behind you will certainly support that and push that through. And I have no doubt that you'll continue to support that from the outside. Um, but for me personally, uh, it's certainly been uh, incredibly important to have been able to work with you, agree on things, disagree on things. One of the things I've always found is that when you do come together in an environment of respect, even if you don't quite understand each other's values, uh, but you do respect the fact that we are there representing the people of the Northern Territory. Uh, that's been an important journey for me as well. So all the best, mate, and I'll uh, certainly see you, I'm sure, out and about across the Territory. But thank you for your work on behalf of the people of the Northern Territory. Um. I'll look for guidance from the chamber. Senator Rustin. Look, um, thank you very much, Mr. President. And I just wanted to say a few short words um, about somebody I've only known for three years, but what an impact um, you've made in those three years that you've been here, Sam. Yes. Um, you know, <laughs> you came here, as Bridget said, or Senator Mackenzie said, sorry, using appropriate language. Um, uh, came here uh, um, to fill big shoes. I mean, Nigel Scullion had been here for 17 years, and he sort of established a tradition here um, that was the, the crazy territory tradition. Um, you know, it was, uh, uh, and the mango daiquiris became famous. And everyone thought, well, no way, the next senator from the Northern Territory can ever possibly go anywhere near touching the sides of uh, of what uh, what Nigel did. And I've got to say, Sam, <laughs> you've done you've done the territory proud. I think your reputation as you leave here will be uh, equally as colourful and interesting as that of Nigel, and uh, I think you've made a huge amount of friends since you've been here. Um, and uh, we're, I think we all count ourselves as, as your friends, and uh, we know that uh, when we get to the Territory we'll all be staying at your place. Um, but the other thing too, um, Sam, I have to say is that you know you have always maintained an extraordinary sense of humour, and um, yeah, I, uh, I was actually sort of in considering your first speech. You you said uh, you know when describing your your beautiful home territories, you know, to many Australians the Northern Territory is an enigma. They know it exists. It has a rock, a park, and a city named after some guy who discovered swimming iguanas. Um, now, I, I'm not sure that's the way I would necessarily describe Darwin, uh, but uh, I think that just epitomises the way that uh, you, uh, you take life. You, you, you don't take yourself seriously, uh, but you take what you do really seriously. And I, I think those sorts of comments show that. But um, you know, the rest of your maiden speech then went on to explain how you had this extraordinary knowledge about the history, the culture. Um, you know what your your home territory meant to you, even though you, it, it wasn't where you were born. I, I believe now, from you know, and listening to your contributions over the last three years, the territory is your heart, uh, and you came here to represent the territory, and that's exactly what you did. So, mate, um, can I just say um, it has been a a huge privilege to have uh, spent three years in this place with you. Uh, we've had many colourful evenings, many colourful days. Uh, I'm going to miss you a lot, uh, miss your honesty, miss your directness, um, you know, miss your passion. Um, but uh, the one thing I am super looking forward to is what's the next chapter of, uh, of the life that is Sam McMahon, because I'm sure it will be equally as interesting uh, because that is the person that you are. So go with all of our love and uh, all the best for whatever comes next, Sam McMahon. Yeah. Yeah. Senator Fawcett. 
Mr. President, thank you. Uh, for Senator Sam McMahon, uh, I've had the privilege in the three years that uh, you've been here to chair both the Senate Environment and Communications Committee that you were a member on, as well as the Joint Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade, where, as other people have said, you showed a great interest in defence, uh, but also took on the responsibility of chairing the PFAS subcommittee and working with communities around Australia. And whilst I won't echo all the other comments about how you've approached the task uh, more broadly in the Senate in those two particular areas, can I just say thank you for bringing your scientific mind, your commitment to evidence-based policy to the various inquiries and reports that we did through the Environment Communications Committee, particularly in the environment area where there's a lot of passion and a lot of people feel strongly about things, but often the arguments aren't based on fact. And your ability to dig into the science and to bring forward fact was really prescient. And I really appreciate that contribution you've made, as well as the contribution you've made into the whole area of foreign affairs, defence, trade and the PFAS subcommittee. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Senator Wong. Thank you. I was just seeing if there were any more government members who wanted to make a contribution. Um, look, I rise on behalf of the Australian Labor Party in opposition to acknowledge and thank Senator McMahon for her service uh, to the people of the Northern Territory, to the Senate uh, and therefore to the nation. I'll just make some brief remarks about this. I want to recognise the approach that Senator McMahon has taken to representing the Northern Territory here in this chamber. I want to publicly thank her for the principled stand she took in relation to the voter ID laws that were proposed uh, and eventually abandoned by the government. Uh, in doing so, she did stand up for the interests of her community uh, at some personal cost. Uh, and I recall an interview with NITV outside Parliament House last Canberra where she said she'd raised some concerns about the bill with her colleagues and expressed concerns about how the, the laws would impact particularly on Indigenous Territorians. Uh, it was, we thought her stance was the right one, but I, we recognise it wasn't necessarily popular on her own side. Uh, and by making public those concerns, uh, she did influence the course of that legislation, which obviously did not proceed. Um, Senator McMahon has also been, uh, as Senator McCarthy said, very principled in her support for a minimum of two seats for the Northern Territory. And you know, that is a, an important achievement for her to have achieved. Um, and as she indicated, she's a strong advocate for territory rights. And we, uh, I agree with her views about the Andrews Bill. So I um, wish her well for this next stage in her life. Uh, I understand we're also doing, if there's nothing further on Senator McMahon from the government, I was going to proceed to Senator Carr, if that was the... Yep, thank you. Um, <coughs> uh, Senator Carr is um, unable to be here today. Um, and I think if we are, depending on what happens in the election and what happens in terms of parliamentary sittings, obviously if we sit before the 30th of June, I would anticipate that Senator Carr would be will come uh, back to, to the Senate uh, and participate in, I'm sure, what will be a, a very um, memorable valedictory. Uh, but in the event, in the event uh, that, in the event that uh, the Senate does not sit again prior to the 30th of June, I didn't want this time to pass without the opportunity to make some remarks about Senator Carr. Uh, I want to, on behalf of uh, the Labor Party, the opposition, my Senate colleagues, I thank our Labor comrade, uh, the Senator, the Honourable Kim Carr, for his service and contribution over what is one of the most significant terms served by a Senator in this parliament. Uh, Senator Carr first entered the Senate in 1993, filling the casual vacancy caused by the resignation of John Button, um, a, a Labor giant. And it was fitting that Senator Carr replaced Australia's preeminent industry minister. And in his time here, he has been a champion for Australian industry. Uh, most notably, he is Minister for Innovation, Industry, Science and Research in the Rudd and Gillard governments, where he and I were, uh, served as members of the cabinet together. He also held additional portfolios during this time, including in manufacturing, defence materiel and human services. Uh, the, the higher education science research and manufacturing communities could not have had, could not have had a more passionate champion and advocate around the cabinet table. 
Uh, and in recent years, he has been an invaluable contributor to the Labor opposition <coughs> under both Bill Shorten and Anthony Albanese. In particular, his role on the Legal and Constitutional Affairs Committee has guided scrutiny of an abundance of legislation, particularly in the area of migration, and previously his position on the, uh, the Senate Economics Committee, uh, he, he was the spearhead for the opposition's critique of failures in the government's management of East Australia's defence shipbuilding program. As Deputy Chair of the Senate Standing Committee for the Scrutiny of Delegated Legislation, he's worked diligently in combination with the Chair of the Committee, Sir the Senator Fear of Anti Wells, to ensure the highest level of scrutiny is applied uh, to the making of government regulations. Together, these two senators, uh, Senator Carr and Senator Fear of Anti Wells, have energised the work of this 90 year old committee to ensure its continuing relevance and importance for many years to come. Uh, I want to acknowledge the role uh, and honour the role that Senator Carr has played as a contributor to Labor's Senate team, and I want to acknowledge and honour his nearly three decades of service to the people of Victoria and the nation, and I want to honour and acknowledge uh, his passionate advocacy for the Labor cause, uh, and in particular for those issues uh, in which, about which he cared so passionately. Senator Walsh. Uh, thank you very much, uh, President. And I, I too rise to uh, share some reflections uh, on uh, Senator Comrade uh, Kim Carr in the event that election timing um, does prevent uh, more fulsome contributions later. Uh, and I note that Kim has been an absolute giant of the Victorian Labor Party. Uh, and I know that as Kim moves to a life beyond his parliamentary work, he will absolutely continue to be a Labor stalwart, a champion of the mighty Victorian union movement uh, and a warrior for Australian manufacturing and the opportunities it can bring working people. Um, anyone in the Victorian Labor Party who has witnessed Kim Carr at a Labor Party conference has seen uh, a man and a machine uh, like no other in action. Um, always sporting his iconic three-piece suit, um, Kim Carr could always prosecute an argument on the conference floor uh, and in the Socialist Left Caucus. Uh, and I can tell you uh, he didn't lose too many. From the moment Senator Carr set foot in this place, he was driven by a commitment to standing up for working people. That was fundamentally why Kim was here. Uh, and over the decades, he has passionately defended the Australian union movement uh, and maintained incredibly close and strong ties with Victorian unions. Um, as Senator Wong noticed, being the Minister for Innovation, Industry, Science and Research uh, in the Rudd-Gillard government has undoubtedly been the highlight of Kim's absolutely extraordinary career. Um, Kim championed the links between research, innovation uh, and advanced manufacturing um, really like no other. Uh, and as a minister, he was able to put that understanding into practice, um, defending jobs in the Australian car industry uh, and absolutely fighting tooth and nail to keep those jobs and those skills here in Australia. Um, this really is the portfolio that Kim was made for. Um, it was his vision that brought together the innovation and industry portfolios. Uh, as a minister, he read widely. He was voracious. Um, he consulted widely. Uh, and everywhere that I go uh, in Victoria today um, to meet with industry, to meet with higher education, to meet with unions, Kim is consistently recognised in those conversations as an absolute powerhouse of this portfolio. Um, on a personal note, I want to acknowledge Kim's wife, Carol, um, who has always been at Kim's side uh, and who is just as passionate about the Australian Labor Party and the union movement as Kim is. Um, I'm sure Carol, um, the kids and the grandchildren um, will like to have Kim at home a little bit more. Um, I know as a fellow avid gardener, uh, his, gardener will like, his garden will like to have Kim at home a little bit more too. Uh, but of course, uh, I think as all of the, the colleagues in this place know, um, if anyone knows Kim, 
uh, we all know that while he's retiring from the parliament, um, he will not be retiring from the mighty Australian labor movement. Uh, and I look forward to many, many more years of Kim's passion for our party, our unions and our people. Thank you, President. Senator Scar. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Scar is rising to pay tribute to uh, who I consider to be a good friend, Senator Carr. And can I just say how much uh, Senator Carr's contribution on the Scrutiny of Delegated Legislation uh, Committee, the Scrutiny of Legislation Committee, and the Legal and Constitutional Affairs Committee has had uh, an enduring positive impact on me? Uh, if, uh, if someone had said to me before I came to this place that uh, the senator or one of the senators I would speak the most fondly of and have a lot in common with in terms of respect for institutions and the importance of those institutions in this place was going to be Senator Kim Carr, I would have been surprised. But perhaps um, uh, I would have been naive. And I'd just like to pay tribute to Senator Carr's intellectual rigour his sense of humour, uh, his generosity of spirit in terms of uh, sharing lessons, uh, hard-learned lessons, uh, no doubt, over his years of uh, contributions in this place, uh, and pay my regards to Senator Carr. Uh, one of the best speeches I've heard in this place over the last three years was Senator Carr paying tribute to his father-in-law and the background of his, um, of his father-in-law, who was uh, a refugee from Europe. And uh, I think that speech, uh, to me, uh, summed up Senator Carr. Uh, and uh, he leaves this place with my enduring affection, having made a very deep impression upon me. Senator Ayres. I um, want to associate myself with all of the comments that have been made um, up to now in relation to Kim and thank um, Senator Scar for his generous, uh, generous remarks. I think for those of us in this place who've had a background in uh, manufacturing uh, and with the AMW, um, and there are a number of those uh, here, um, Kim, Kim Carr leaves a um, very important legacy um, uh, in this place and more broadly across the labour movement. He's, um, you know, notwithstanding the fact that you, you know, Kim was and will continue to be a formidable uh, operator in the labour movement, and not everybody always agreed with Kim. Sometimes famously, um, he is held in deep regard in the uh, manufacturing sector, in the scientific community, in the research community, uh, in higher education, as really understanding the connection between Australian research and development uh, and jobs for working class and regional Australians in manufacturing. He understood that connection, understood the role that good, smart, forward-looking industry policy uh, could play in building um, a better country. He had humble beginnings um, in Tumut uh, and he loves the Snowy Mountains. Uh, for a Victorian, I expect that he's going to spend a significant part of his uh, retirement uh, in regional New South Wales. Uh, Kim, uh, Kim is in fact one of the most well-read members of this Senate, uh, uh, deeply engages uh, with uh, writing and research, um, much more in the UK Labor tradition, if I can put it that way, of understanding, you know, having a real connection um, with, uh, uh, with the intellectual work or in, in terms of philosophy right across to science, and that's something uh, that will be missed. He is, I have to say, um, as another member of the Labor's uh, national executive, Kim is the longest serving member of the national executive of the Labor Party in its history, um, which, which was a remarkable achievement. He only stepped down recently. Um, and when you think of some of the characters in the Labor movement's history who served on that body, to, to be in that position where you are the longest serving member ever, that is quite an achievement. Uh, and his contribution uh, to the movement uh, is immense. Uh, as somebody who didn't always agree with Kim on a range of issues, what I can say about it is you would always listen to Kim's view and you should always have respected 
uh, Kim's view about these things. Now, as I understand it, we may have another opportunity where, where, the, where uh, Kim himself may be able to make some remarks, um, and I hope that that I hope that that is the case because he does deserve the opportunity uh, to make some valedictory remarks in this place. Uh, thanks, Mr. President. Senator Smith. I'd like to add my, uh, and associate myself with the remarks made by Senator Scar. Uh, the Scrutiny Bills Committee had its last meeting, we suspect, of the 46th Parliament this morning, and uh, Senator Carr was present uh, with Senator Davey, Senator Scar and myself, and we reflected on the important work that the Scrutiny Committees of the Senate do. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt that this is an institution that evolves over time. Uh, some of us as Conservatives might be surprised to learn that. I've certainly learned that and come to understood that. But I think one of the evolutions of this place that is unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory is the loss of its scrutiny role, uh, the loss of interest that senators bring to their scrutiny functions, and uh, certainly Senator Carr uh, stands as a powerful testimony to the importance of the scrutiny function. And as Senator Ayres just said, Senator Carr is absolutely someone uh, who should be listened to. Uh, and certainly on scrutiny matters, uh, we paid very, very close attention to. So we uh, thank him very, very much for what is a very, very important legacy that he leaves to that function of the Senate. Senator Pratt. Comrade Carr, I hope that you will get to come back and make some valedictory uh, remarks and that we will be able to play, pay proper, proper tribute to your fantastic career uh, then. But right now, in case we don't get the opportunity to do that, I want to say his uh, absolutely enormous intelligence, his that kind of traditional senatorial, very masculine senator type that uh, he has displayed his loud, booming voice in this chamber uh, that will certainly be missed. But from everything from higher education, local content, industry policy, the Australian Research Council, manufacturing, uh, the high, higher education, anti-dumping, uh, different uh, elements of human rights, the scrutiny uh, of Bill's committee, there is so much to have uh, learned from and admired in Comrade Carr. He, we, uh, he didn't always agree uh, with everyone uh, in, internally in the Labor Party, but actually that was a good thing because you would always learn from the robustness of that debate. He was never, ever a shrinking violet about stepping up and having the debate, and we are better off for that fact. So in that context, I feel like I've therefore been able to learn a great deal from Senator Carr because of the visibility of the way that he has uh, involved himself very publicly in those debates internally and indeed uh, here in the parliament. Uh, so I pay tribute to uh, my friend and comrade Kim and I hope to see you back here after the election should we have an opportunity to reconvene. Senator Urquhart. Thank you. Um, look, I would like to just put my, um, add my remarks to uh, the comments that have been made by um, senators on this side and other side as well. Um, I have worked in this place with Kim for uh, 11 years, um, but for the 20 years before that, um, I worked with Kim as a, an AMW organiser and State Secretary, and I always remember the times when Kim was in the portfolio of industry and manufacturing and science. Um, he was a frequent visitor to Tasmania to come and visit the workplaces that I was repre uh, that I represented members at, and particularly the couple of um, ones that I particularly remember were. Uh, a car component uh, facility in Launceston that was having a lot of difficulty with finance and getting orders. And Kim stepped up to the plate, got a delegation of Toyota, Ford um, and uh, executives together. He got uh, the union representatives together and he got the ministers in the Victorian State Parliament together. And we had a meeting and out of that meeting, uh, there was a number of things that were forged and that business continued to thrive for many years after. Unfortunately, with the demise of the car industry, that business is no longer operating, but it was thanks 
to Kim that it got a number of years after that. The other one was the Cadbury factory, which I had the ability to look after, which was probably one of my favourite places to uh, look mm -hmm. after. And I remember um, many hours down there at that factory with Kim uh, talking about uh, manufacturing science and industry and innovation. And at that time, the food industry was going through a lot of innovation with uh, getting rid of a lot of man manual handling work and uh, a lot of machinery and robotics coming in. And uh, we always called on Kim as AMW to come and look at these places to work through processes with us. So, um, you know, he will be missed here. I think Louise said, or Senator Pratt said, you know, his booming voice was never, um, he was never shy in the chamber, um, nor in our meetings, uh, obviously in our caucuses. You always heard Kim when he wanted to speak. So uh, I do hope he gets the opportunity to come back, but I know that he will look forward to being able to walk his two little grandsons to school almost every day now, which he's, I know that he missed during the long lockdowns when he stayed here in Canberra. So thank you, Kim, for your contribution to uh, the, the, um, public, in your public life, but also to the union movement. I believe there being no further contributions, I will just add my thanks on behalf of the Senate for the service of the departing senators, and we will move on.